Great, here we go. So our next talk is going to be from Anjali Young from Collab Land. She's going to be talking about how Web3 revolutionized advertising through the power of community. She's coming to us from Denver, Colorado. And a fun fact about Anjali, she actually gave acting lessons to Tony Danza. So pretty, pretty multi, multifaceted lady here. Please welcome Anjali. Um, let's see. Yes, you can hear me. It wasn't acting lessons, it was acting advice, and it was actually um, really quite embarrassing. I, I, it just happened. I don't know. I just kept talking and talking, and then, like, what am I doing? He has, like, a Tony and an Oscar, I don't know. Um, it, it, it was silly, but I did it anyway. So that gives you a little tip off into what I'm like. All right, well, today I'm going to be talking about how Web3 will defeat Web 2's advertising dystopia. My God, that's a mouthful, isn't it? So pretty much I'm gonna tell you why Web 2 sucks and why we're winning and why we should keep winning. So that's kind of my um, subtitle to that. Um, I am Anjali Young. I am the co-founder and the CCO of Collabland. You may have used Collabland before. We are a token gating uh, community management system. We started on Telegram and then Discord, and now you can do token gated websites and really take it with you into your web app wherever you want. Um, so that's Collabland. We started in 2018 and as a social recovery contract wallet and had a few pivots along the way. And then Collabland as a product started taking shape and gain adoption in 2020. So we are, um, yeah, three and a half years old now. So it's very exciting. And we actually uh, incorporated Near in May of 2023. So new to Near for integration, but not new to near in terms of our love for the ecosystem and the platform itself. All right, so we're gonna start with this. How do you make a talk interesting? Well, I was, I've been thinking a lot about how to make a talk interesting. And the one thing I came up with for this is like, understanding that there's a hero and a villain. And so in our situation, it's pretty similar. I'm gonna be using Hunger Games as our little metaphor throughout. And we've got President Snow here. He represents Web 2. He's greedy, he's heartless, he's extractive, he's entrenched, we're used to it. And it's become a dystopian society where bots are following us around, cookies are following us around, everything we're doing, watching us, selling us what they think we should have preying our, on our insecurities like wrinkles or belly fat and showing us that over and over and over again until we think that we need to buy those things. So that's where we are living right now. So could we call it a dystopia? Yes, we're in it now. And then we have Katniss, our hero. She's resourceful, she's inclusive, she's community-minded, and she's inspired. Part of it is in order to be in this space right now, we have to be inspired. Like we don't have everything. We don't have the support of our governments. We don't have support of our financial institutions. We don't have much support anywhere. If you think about multi or media, right? Right now, what people say about us, they're all hopping on this SBF story. They hopped on the Terra Luna collapse, like the bad stories. And I think Rolling Stone had an article just recently that said like NFTs are dead and that 95% of all NFTs are trash. So the popular conversation around crypto is negative. So in order to be here and not be counted out, we have to believe in ourselves, similar to Katniss back in District 12. So what is it about Web3 that is going to win? First, I'm gonna talk about a little bit about decentralization and what that really means in the advertising space. So instead of platforms, for example, Facebook, where they own all your data, they own all of my photos of my children, they own all our Halloween parties, and they own all my birthday parties, and they own their first steps and their first day of school, that's not data that belongs to me, it's data that belongs to them. If they decide to deplatform me, if they decide to kick me off, of Facebook, fun fact, I'm not on Facebook, but it's a perfect example, um, then they can do it. They can also slice and dice my data. They can decide when I was at 
uh, Yosemite and what I did there and sell that to somebody. They can decide where I was between March 2021 and May 2021 and sell that. I can be sliced and diced and pulled apart and put into different groups and they can sell me to the highest bidder. And that's what happens when you have centralized data. But what do we have with blockchain? We have decentralized data, which means everything that I do on the blockchain, anybody can see. Anybody in this room could see, which means there isn't a single point, a single person that can sell it for me. And that's what makes it so special. It can't be taken away from me, but it also can't be used against me. And if it is being used against me, it's because I'm choosing to participate in the system. When I participate on a platform where they own my data, then although I'm doing all of the work, it's the moments of my life that I'm spending editing my photos, creating the captions, responding to all the comments, that work that I'm doing online is being monetized. Now, what I imagine for Web3 is that when we want to be advertised to, we will be able to participate in that system. And we will get to decide. If someone is sending me something, I get to decide if I want to tell somebody about it or not. So decentralization in that way allows us to not have a single gatekeeper of our data, which is incredibly special. Next is better online experiences. We've got more chains, we've got more builders, and we have more choices in this world. We are not going to be uh, succumbing to people deciding to put advertising before, between our wallet and our transaction. Can you imagine? I was thinking about this last night. Like if MetaMask decides to put some B-roll before I send or receive tokens, I'm just going to use another wallet. And if it happens on all the EVM chains, then I'm going to move to another chain. Right now, we're in a situation where there are so many people that are building in this space, and which is why we need to encourage multi-chain and encourage every new project that comes out there because it keeps making us better. It's that siloing of, um, siloing of activities and siloing of platforms that end us putting us in a situation we're kind of beholden to whatever we have to get, right? Compared to this situation where we're gonna be able to um, try out different places and try out different, different processes and try out different apps right now. And also, we're a cautious bunch. Like when I think about what we, we have a Twitter spaces that we do every Thursday with Collabland. And one of the things we talk about is not FOMOing. We tell people, don't ever, if somebody says to you, do this right now, click it right now. You, if you don't take this opportunity right now, you're gonna lose, run far, far away. And show of hands, when's the last time someone in this room saw a Twitter ad and said, ooh, that looks like a good idea? Like, it just doesn't happen. And so in the same ways in the old system where they could just advertise us and keep advertising to us, it's almost like we have a natural repulsion to it, which I think puts us in a really, really great position to try to fight off the old Web2 advertising. When I imagine it myself, I think like I have a bullshit direct, detect, like a bullshit detector. And the bullshit detector in Web 2, I never read the privacy policy. I would keep clicking through all the time, but now I do not. Or at least we uh, pretend to care about privacy policies in a way we didn't before, which I think is really compelling. So the old system of just show it to us over and over and over again, if anything, we're gonna be repulsed by it. And we should use that as an opportunity to want more, to ask for more. Like we're trying to build this new balance between the consumer and the advertiser. And let's try to use that to our advantage now, considering we're not going to be the types that just fall for an ad. And creators have options. In the old way, we were in a situation where advertising was kind of the only way to do it. I mean, if you think about YouTube, right? Like, originally, it was like, okay, you can sell advertising. And when you have advertising, then you can make some money. But within crypto and within blockchain, there are different ways to make money. Thanks to token gating, which that's Collabland. We created that back in 2020. And it's opened up an entire new world for communities, for tokens, for all kinds of tokens and NFTs. You have token gated access. A quick story about that with NBA Top Shot. They had a project called um, Cool Cats. And when they created a token gated room for Cool Cats, 
the project or the token price went up because now all of a sudden the tokens themselves had access to a group. Well, that's kind of spurred on an entire cottage industry of token gating. You have exclusive IRL events. You have to be a holder to it attend. You have merch, token gated merch stores, where if, I, if I'm a holder of that token, then yeah, I get to buy that special pudgy penguin sweatshirt. And you also have increasing the community size. You know, I was thinking about the brands that have been joining our space lately. And what is the benefit of these luxury brands? Why are they here? And part of the reason luxury brands are here is because you won't be able to afford that $5,000 handbag. Maybe, maybe you can. But if you want to start getting a relationship with future consumers, then you can grow that community size with digital assets. And so there's so many more opportunities to reach consumers at any stage. Maybe they aren't ready to join the full-fledged project. Maybe you can't afford a bored ape, but maybe you can afford a mutant ape, or maybe you can afford a dog. There are lots of different opportunities, and there's so much more that Yuga's doing as well. But there's so many more opportunities there to grow your community and start building a relationship with people within crypto than in the old way. And new ad models will emerge. So what do we do when these old models aren't working anymore? What are advertising, what are they gonna do? And we want that money. You know, I think a lot about advertising dollars. It's a huge business, multi-billion dollar business. They're the ones that spend the most on Super Bowl ads. We want a taste of that money. We need it in crypto, right? Like we need fresh blood here. And so one of the things that people can do, and I have it down there as, as number three, you can check it out, which is, because I know I'm running out of time now, but anyway, is sponsoring, sponsoring behaviors that matter to us. With Collab Land, we've incorporated 4337, and we have a couple of new initiatives that are gonna come out, where you're gonna be able to do transactions within your community. And because of 4337, outside parties, a third party is going to be able to sponsor those transactions, which means buying and selling NFTs, which means tipping each other, trading, all of that is gonna be able to be sponsored by a third party. And if I get a note that says Pepsi paid for my transaction, then if that's something that I want to do anyway, like, yes, that's meaningful ad dollars to me. Like, I am going to feel more comfortable about possibly drinking Pepsi next time over Mountain Dew or Coke. Because you know what? Last week, they paid for me to send $5 USDC to him or her. And so it's going to feel special. And I'm going to want to, I'm going to have good feelings about somebody who's actually paying for something I want to do. So that's just one example. But of course, loyalty points, loyalty clubs, and airdrops are always nice. I'm not going to say no to airdrops. So any advertiser out there, yeah, we like the airdrops too. Oh my gosh, Tra transparency in advertising. So this isn't necessarily from the um, user perspective, but what we get with transparency in advertising, advertising itself is a broken system. So not only are we like going to set up a situation that's more advantageous to us as consumers, however, for advertisers in Web2, it's a broken system. It's all spammy. They, they, the websites are botted constantly. They're paying out millions of dollars to scammers who put up fake websites and run the banner ad and then have it botted to death. It happens on Twitter to us all the time. It still happens. But because of that, there's motivation for Web2 advertising to move to Web3. We have a real opportunity here where the incentives are aligned. The incentives are aligned for them because they know they don't actually, they can't tell if it's an actual human being or not. And we have proof of humanity. I mean, Gitcoin Passport's a great one, but there's so many different projects that are working on proof of humanity right now. And once we can prove proof of humanity, then advertisers are going to want to actually get their message into the minds of real human beings. And so not only is it that we can demand more and we can get what we want out of that relationship, but they're gonna get what they really want, which is loyal, actual human beings looking at their products. And that's it. So I am Anjali Young. Um, you can find me, Anjali at collab.land is my email, on Twitter and on, where else am I? Warpcast, 
and maybe Instagram if you're interested in non-work stuff. I'm Dama de Roca, it's a lady from Boulder in Spanish. Um, yeah, so definitely come up to me afterwards if you wanna talk about advertising. Mainly the point I'm trying to make is like, this is a really special time. Like we're all here because we're believers and we care about the future. Like there's so many things right that are going for our space right now. And there's so many things that people are going to want about what we're doing right now. Like. If, I, if there's one message I could give to all of you, it's like absorbing the power of what's possible, like not only within each other, but even with third parties outside, like advertisers. And let's not shy away from advertising, because like I said, it's a lot of money and we need it, we could use it. However, when you're dealing with advertising, don't be afraid to be assertive about what our ethos are and what we value, because like the ball's in our court here. And I have a little PO app. Um, my comms team made this for me, so I'm not really sure how it works. But if you'd like to try it, and then if it doesn't work, then I can give you a pin so you can come find me afterwards. Thank you.